Okay, we'll end on this right here. Give the Niners fans a little something more, which is I, I've been listening to all this coverage of the draft that you do. Yeah. I want I want your draft pick, your first rounder, that just if you could have your druthers, and we're not gonna talk like top five, but like a guy like a guy where, oh my God, I can't believe that he slipped. Uh and a guy where he actually might be realistically there. I want those two from you as your ideal draft pick for the 49ers to go out on. Um, You know, JC Latham would be the guy that I, from the Alabama offensive right tackle that I would be like, I can't believe he slipped. Uh, I don't mm. believe he will slip. I think he's probably going to go in the top 10, but you never know. And there's always these workouts and who knows, uh, this guy's six, six, 335 pounds. He wears number 65 for Alabama. He's their right tackle. He's a blue chip plug and play guy that you're going to be able to day one. He's going to start at right tackle and he's going to start at right tackle for the next decade. So that would be like, you know, if you could get that guy, that kind of, that's like your number one need and a big time guy who's a blue chipper falls right into your lap. Um, I think if it was me, um, I, I like um, the guy you named before, Rook or 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 Row Row Row. It's tough. It's or <laughs> Row Row Row. That's what it. Or Row Row Row. It's O R H O R H O R O. Uh, but anyway, he's a Clemson defensive lineman. He wore number thirty three or thirty two for Clemson this year. And he's 295 pounds. And if you watch him work out, he looks like he's moving around like a linebacker. Um, he was an all ACC player. I mean, the, the guy is really a tremendous player. And you just don't, when you see a guy who's 295 and you look at him and you're like, wow, that guy looks like he's 270. Um, mm -hmm. That means he's really special. And not only is this guy a great athlete, and played in a big time conference. He was he was all ACC, uh, but he was all all ACC academic as well. So you're talking about a guy who's really really smart, um, who's really really athletic, um, and he's earned his degree already. He's working on a master's. Um, you know, he's a two time ACC honor roll selection. Uh, he's just he's a tremendous player. He really is, and. And right now, he's not being thought of that highly just because there are other guys. And But his workout numbers were incredible. His production was incredible. And, you know, we're talking about a 300-pounder that could be a great pass rusher and dominant against the run. So I'll say Rook a row, row, row. I think you're getting some insight people into the way Larry views the game. It is in the trenches. Uh, it is based on the foundation. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Um, who would it be for me? Nobody cares about my football opinions. I guess if something crazy happened, uh, Ladu, Ladu, however you pronounce his name out of UCLA. UCLA. Yeah, yeah. That guy is not going to be available to the Niners, but he's got a scary injury history. So maybe somebody behind the scenes, there's some sort of, or maybe, I don't know, they trade Ayuk and they get into the mid round. But I feel like that guy, it, unless injury is uh, something that derails him just on the basis of his play, I just feel like that guy is going to be a star. Um, when Great I see player. a defense... When I see a defensive end uh, or an edge rusher who not only has the double digit sacks, but also gets two interceptions, that's usually an indicator of a pretty special athlete. So that guy is kind of a, a dream selection. And then unlike you, I like, I like the bells and whistles. I, you know, I, I want them to have uh, a receiver uh, who actually scares uh, spags. Um, and I, I like, hey man, maybe I just like Pac-12 guys. I was more, uh, I was almost intrigued further by Troy Franklin for having such a bad combine that it made me go, ha, huh, he's going to fall. Okay, that's good because I, I generally care more about a guy's production uh, than what they do in these various weird drills that they set up. You can tell me I'm an idiot and the drills matter. I don't know, but I like, I like him. So those are my two selections and I put in about, oh, I don't know, a thousandth of the uh, the man hours that that Larry does when it comes to investigating all of this, so you can take that with a massive grain of salt. 
Troy Franklin, huh? Troy Franklin? Is that who it is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My only concern is that um, Pac-12 receivers have everything going in their favor. The mm. game is called very tight. It's played in good weather. It's usually with pro-style coaches, pro-style offenses, and great future NFL quarterbacks. So I think oftentimes, like it's very there's lots of Pac-12 receivers. Whether you're going Dante Pettis or Sean Dawkins or what, who just for whatever reason um, fall short of expectations because everything I mean, favors the receiver in the Pac-12. Uh, but that being said, I do like Jerry Rice's kid, Brendan Rice, quite a bit. And, yeah. um, and I, I would love to see Brendan Rice um, playing for the 49ers. But some of those top-tier Pac-12 guys make me nervous this year. Roma Dunze, uh, mm. Troy Franklin. Um, I'm a little nervous. Jalen Polk. Um, all of the Pac-12 receivers. Jalen McMillan. Um, I'm a little concerned about the Pac-12 receivers. The receiver, the two receivers I love in this draft, I love uh, Xavier Leggett. Yeah, I was about to. Say, I was about to say, what are we doing, Larry? Are we going Leggett second round? You know, we're I not going Troy Franklin. I mean, he's two thirty. He's two hundred thirty pounds, and he ran the four threes. And if you yeah. watch him, he's amazing. And then Brian he Thomas off the film. Yeah. The LSU LSU gets a lot of great players, and both the LSU receivers, Malik Neighbors and and Brian Thomas Jr., are special. I mean, really special. Like, if if people talking about, well, should the Niners move Ayuk? I wouldn't move Ayuk, but you know what? If somehow I could wind up with moving Ayuk, getting a top tier tackle like a J.C. Latham, and still coming away with Brian Thomas, I would do it because I think there's a chance that Thomas is better than Ayuk. Um, mm. So. So there you go. That's that's those would be my guys, and I kind of like Malachi Corley as well from Western Kentucky. Yeah, that reminds me of reminds me a little bit of a Debo Samuel, and I'm the other receiver that I'm super hot to trot on right now is a slot receiver, and slot receivers are generally smaller. They're you know they run inside, but there's a kid named Malik Washington who played mm. for University of Virginia this year who's like. Tyree kill size. He's like five, eight, one ninety five. But I mean, if the, the production, this kid started at Northwestern, he transferred to UVA, the production of this guy. I mean, I mean, this guy went for just huge numbers all year long. Um, Malik Washington, really tremendous yeah. little player. There you go. Larry does his homework. Uh, I'm intrigued by Malachi Corley. He didn't really yeah. do the combine stuff. I, I I like knowing the 40 times just for my own curiosity. I would have wanted to know it for him. Uh, but yeah, he's the yak king, as Steve Smith said it, in college football and has some great highlights. Leggett, you mentioned, is somebody where his highlights, he just looks like he's running away from people. Now, I don't know why this is his only productive year he's had. This is the sort of thing again. It's the behind the scenes. Like what sort of what sort of uh, investigative work are you going to turn up there? Uh, I got to check out Washington. There's a whole other conversation, Larry, about how much receivers matter. There are so many great ones. The Chiefs won a Super Bowl without really investing in receivers. But that's for another time, another conversation. 